Hi, I'm James, and today I'm taking a look at upgrading this laptop, which is a HP 15S FQ 1515NA. Uh, this guide, however, applies to all the uh, 15S FQ 1000 series chassis machines. And first thing we need to do is to flip the machine over. Now this machine uh, has a few hidden screws, so what we're going to do is just take our pry tool and doing this left-handed just to try and give a better view. So we are going to take our pry tool and peel out this strip for the rubber strip on the base and at the top we are then going to do the same and a bit nicer here because the adhesive strip is also pulled out so with that done what we need to do is remove the screws from the base so we have three here two each side and then three at the top as well Now this machine, I bought it as a refurb uh, and I'm going to be using it for some ice lake testing uh, that I want to get done. Uh, so I believe it has been opened up and had the main board replaced. Um, but hopefully things should all be as standard inside. It looks like there may have been some change of screws here as I'd normally expect all of these to match. As normal, when I take these out, I just like to arrange them up here in the same positions as they came from. They should all be the same or similar size screws, but perhaps these back corner ones, which are black, are slightly different. Now here, these ones I'm going to just leave in uh, the base because they won't push past the adhesive strip because that's still in place, but we should be able to lift things out. But let's just see if we can just pull those through. It's generally not necessary to replace this strip. It's generally, unless you get anything in it, it should retain its stick. So, with the screws removed from the base, we are now going to flip the machine back over, check that we still have things framed correctly. And we are going to take our pry tool and we are going to press in at the edges of the machine like so. And what we are just trying to do is just to starting at the front is probably the best bet. So just gently work our way along the edge and begin releasing the base of the chassis from the top panel. Let's go back to this side now. And now we are going to turn the laptop over and starting in this corner as this is where things have released the best, just begin to lift. A 
back off. And with that done, that gets us inside the system. So the battery in this machine is a standard HP HT03XL battery. And to remove this, we have five screws holding it in. Uh, again, just trying to minimize blockage here. So we need to go around And remove each of these in turn. Um, if you are replacing the battery I do tend to go with the genuine HP batteries um, just because of mixed experiences with third-party replacements and if I can find one I will put a link into the description for this. So with the last screw removed, we then just get in under the battery and it is a single connector onto the main board there. So slot that off and our battery is out. Now the SSD in this particular system is only a 128 gigabyte model and you can see it is located in the M2 slot here. Uh, this particular machine has no hard drive. Um, if it did, it would be located here and there would be a daughterboard and cable which would fit in here. Um, generally, it is not cost effective to add these if your machine is not equipped with one. And although I haven't checked on any of these models, HP do have a habit of emitting the M2 connector on machines that are equipped with a hard drive. So if you have a SSD equipped machine, be aware you won't be able to fit a hard drive. And if you have a hard drive equipped machine, you may only be able to fit a SATA SSD, a two and a half inch, and you may not be able to fit an M2. You would have to open up the machine and see if that slot is present. So to remove our M2 drive, we are just going to use our screwdriver to release this single retaining screw and with that done we can then pull the drive as so to remove it. This particular drive is a uh, M2-2280 uh, SATA based drive uh, made by Samsung in this machine. However the machine does also support MVME based drives as there are some configurations of it that use those. Um, we are just going to now slot that back in and then refit the retaining screw to refit the drive. So now we need to fit our battery. So simply line the battery up with the mounting holes and press it down on the connector gently there and refit the five screws holding it in place. Now we simply want to refit the base of the laptop. So to do this, uh, as it took a bit of angling around the HDMI port, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the base on lining up this corner first and trying to ensure that it is slotted over those ports. I'll then line the rest up and just press lightly down to get the base more or less in place. We're now going to turn the laptop over, open it up and begin just pressing so around the edges of the chassis to clip
the top and bottom panels. Back together. So with the back panel now back in place, all that's left to do is refit the screws Finally, take the rubber strips, thicker one at the top here, and the way I find that it's best to put these in is to basically put in each end and then smooth the middle in, uh, that way you avoid any bulges, and the bottom one If you find they don't stick well, it may be useful to use a fresh adhesive strip, um, but in most cases you can re-stick them as they were before. This one may need, because it's been done a couple of times now, may need a fresh strip applying, but we will leave it as so for now. And with that done, our work is complete. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future. If you have any questions, just ask them in the comments below. And give us a like if you have found this video useful. Thanks for watching.